Hello! Today we're going to talk about sending a UART message from ESP32 to STM32 via UART. We will follow the hardware connection and the software in the ESP32 and in the STM32. Uh, inside ESP32 we'll be using ESP IDF 5.0 and that's it actually every board is connected to different computer via a usb and between those two boards the wires are connected for which enables the uart connection uh, regarding the pinout of esp32 where Talking about GPIOs and the numbers that you will see, those are ping GPIOs. Specifically, we'll be using a UART2, which is here, TX2, which is the most important, and RX2 UART. The UART0 is uh, used by the USB, so we won't be using it. Uh, re regarding the STM32, we are using nuclear board. F103RB uh, and uh, we check our example on this board of course everybody will use the appropriate board that you are using regarding the pins we are talking about blue ones blue pins here so for example if we are talking about uh, PA8 which is a pin on the uh, microcontroller this pin is connected to um, pin number 21 on the board so in our drawing we will connect pin 21 to the relevant gpio on esp32 uh, okay the actual uart connection from the tx2 of the esp32 to uh, uh, UART1 on the STM, because UART2 on the STM is used by the USB, which is connect STM board to the computer. And here on the ESP, it's UART0. The actual pin numbers are GPIO17 and GPIO16. Ground and uh, the voltage we actually didn't connect, but if you are not using the power supply from the computer this connection connection is essential the funny thing is here you see on the stm board the number of the ground uh, one can ask why you specific pin for the ground you have a few grounds here on the board the funny thing is that on different grounds it just didn't work so i found this specific pin with this specific ground that uh, this example is actually working uh, pretty strange. The last slide will be regarding the uh, different possibilities to receive a UART on the STM32 board. Uh, basically, we have uh, three possibilities a standard receive, an interrupt received, and DMA for lar large chunks of data received. We will be using only this one, the basic receive pooling mode, which blocks the CPU. So it's most inefficient, but the most simple to, 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 to do. We won't be using the interrupt mode, and we also won't be using the DMA mode, which enables the CPU uh, function in parallel. Now, regarding our sources, all our codes are saved in SIMS IoT devices repositories. We are talking about a um, UART from ESP32 IDF to STM32, this one. Here we have two files. I am not uh, saving entire projects because it's a lot of data and the relevant programs are only here this one is for esp32 
And this one is uh, for STM32, uh, and we will talk in much more detail regarding those things. For example, we are taking this code from ESP32 and paste it in, inside our project, which we did here and here. So uh, here we pasted the code from the GitHub directory and uh, here we're just running the cmd line to run the uh, flash and monitor uh, of this i will run it in parallel uh, the code is uh, pretty straightforward we define the pins you see 17 and 16 which we have talked about the bound rate is uh, 900 which is very important and this code is basically transmitting 22 bytes which is hello from ESP32 with three dots how do, does it do it here we finish the init function which we used in our previous videos please note that the UART2 is used here and uh, then we have a task which defines the strings that we want to se send and its length. And here in this command, we are actually sending the string. Okay. And writing the number of bytes that were sent. So we are using UART, UART number two. We are sending this string, TX data. And this string is of tx length, uh, the length of the string, and tx bytes uh, have the number of bytes sent. Then we print the same data on the screen, we write transmit, we write the number of bytes, you see it here, 22 bytes in this case, and we write the actual string, hello from ESP32 here. Then we wait for five seconds approximately. Uh, the main is initiate the UART, wait for a second, and then start the, start the infinite task, this one. Pretty straightforward program. Now let's go to the other computer and see, and see how does it look from the, from the STM32 point of view. Okay. Now we're on the second computer, which is connected to STM32 board. Uh, first, we will look on the GitHub repository and we will be using this file. Uh, the concept of STM32 is pretty different. So if you want to use the automatic code generation, which we are using, uh, you have to put a uh, the code only in very specific location location so our edit to the code was here in the code begin we edited the include string and uh, this code was automatically generated uh, here we defined in the user code begin to we defined those three lines the rx data string uh, we define the length of the RF data string. We will talk why it's exactly 22 or not something else. And we transmit one message on the screen. Then we go to the third uh, part, which is user code begin three. Inside the while infinite loop, we have those three lines. We receive the data via UART1 from the ESP32. Then we transmit this data to the UART2 to the screen in order to enable us to see it on the screen. And then we wait for a second. Now let's go to the IDE cube. Here we have our code with those three snippets added inside the code here. In here and here, two and three. First, we should uh, see where the COM is connected. 
For this purpose, we will open the device manager. Inside the device manager, you see the ports. STM Electronics is connected on COM number three. We will open PuTTY just to see the UART number three, COM number three with the following speed, 9600, open. And it, right away, we got the input from the ESP32 because it's connected. And I already compiled the code. But uh, just to see how it works, I will recompile the code again. So we are compiling the code. And the expected behavior here is first to transmit the empty string. Here, you see the empty string was transmitted. And then he began, which was this line here. Sorry. And after it, we started the infinite loop when we're receiving data and immediately transmitting it on the screen here. So we see the message from the ESP32, which is presented here. And the interesting thing is why I used the IRIX data length of 22. Uh, it's a pretty philosophical issue. We can, we have to explain to the computer in some way which character we want to chunk. For example, here, the array is 30 bytes long. So he will fill it with junk from the previous and the other transmissions. We can, uh, we can define the character, for example, R or N or zero. But once again, whenever you know how the string is built, uh, you, had, you can put some logic in order to define its length. Here we just know that we sent 22 bit length, 22 byte length string. So we, we put only 22 byte string to read. For different applications, you will have to use different approaches. Uh, but for the simplest possible application, we choose this approach. Uh, so you see how it's working. Every five seconds or so, you see the transmission of the string. Let's look on the hardware definitions of this uh, project. Here we will enter the uh, cube wizard. For this, it's here. And you see, we defined here the RX in PA10 and the TX in PA9 and connected the proper pins on the board. Uh, regarding the connectivity, both of our UARTs are enabled. One is connected to ESP32, this one, and one is connected to the screen. The one is connected to the ESP32, have the following definitions, where here we have a 9600 uh, bits per second rate. So just to see the final results, let's go back. Here we see the COM3 port on our computer and we see the string uh, from uh, the ESP32 uh, which send every five uh, seconds uh, to approximately five seconds to STM32. Thank you.